good morning dear students of class 12 welcome to the english online learning class today we are going to take up part 7 of the text of the lesson in detail by louis fisher so first let us do a quick recap of this lesson as discussed earlier this lesson is an excerpt from uh, louis fisher's book the life of mahatma gandhi which has been judged as one of the best books ever written on gandhi ji uh, the excerpt deals with a series of events as told by gandhi ji to louis fisher that urged gandhi ji to force the departure of british from india it was in 1916 uh, at the annual session of the indian national congress in lucknow a peasant rajkumar shukla from champaran met gandhi ji during the annual session of the indian national congress in lucknow and requested gandhi ji to visit champaran and look into the condition of peasants there rajkumar shukla was adamant and gandhi ji was impressed by his tenacity and story and finally gandhi ji agreed to accompany him to champaran now on way to champaran gandhi ji uh, stopped in patna to meet a lawyer rajendra prasad as rajkumar shukla took him to rajendra prasad's house rajendra prasad who was a lawyer then but later he became the president of the congress party and president of india at that time rajendra prasad was not in the house but his servants as they knew shukla uh, who used to bring the cases of the peasants of some champaran for legal advice to rajendra prasad they allowed rajkumar shukla and gandhi ji whom they considered to be another peasant they allowed them to stay outside but on condition gandhi ji was not allowed to draw water from the well as they thought gandhi ji was an untouchable now on way to champaran after leaving patna gandhi ji stopped at muzaffarpur so that he could have a better understanding of the problems of the share crop he contacted jb kriplani who met him at the station with a group of students and he also stayed in the house of professor malkani who was a government teacher for two days and he considers this as an extraordinary thing as to harbor uh, an advocate of home rule uh, was something very daring and people were scared indians were scared to give shelter to the advocates of home rule but malkani showed his daringness and he allowed gandhi ji he welcomed gandhi ji to stay in his house now the news of gandhi ji uh, coming to champaran spread like wildfire when in champa in muzaffarpur gandhi ji was contacted by lawyers who discussed with gandhi ji the type of cases brought by the peasants of champaran and the fees that they charged from them gandhi ji was uh, angry and he chided the lawyers for cheating and for charging high fees from the uh, peasants of champaran and he also said that law courts are of no use when the peasants are so crushed and fear stricken law courts are useless and the real relief for them is to be free from fear gandhi ji also studied the land arrangement of champaran got complete information of the problems of the indigo share croppers as large farms in champaran were owned by englishmen and indian peasants work as tillers as tenants and the landlord forced all the tenants the indian peasants to grow indigo in 15% of their land and surrender the entire crop as rent but 
In the recent development, as synthetic indigo had been developed by Germans and the demand of Indian indigo fell in the world market, the British landlords tried to gain out of the situation and they forced the tenants to pay them compensation for releasing them from 15% arrangement. And this made the tenants have unhappy when they came to know of the real situation. Gandhiji began by getting all the facts when he reached Champaran, he was met with opposition from Brit British landlord. When he refused to obey the orders of the British administration to return from his mission, he was given summons to court to report at court the next morning. He got mass support from the local peasants, which was beginning of the end of their fear of the British. The inability of the officers to control the masses resulted in the trial being postponed. Now, other prominent lawyers like Rajin Prasad, Rich Krishore, Maulana Musrul Haq arrived in Champaran to support Gandhiji and they were ready to court arrest in battles. This made Gandhiji remark the battle of Champaran is won because he had united the lawyers and they were ready to fight for the rights of the tenants of Champaran, the peasants of Champaran. Gandhiji now received a letter informing him that the governor general of the province had dropped the case. This was the first crime, first victory of the civil disobedience movement. And on the orders of the lieutenant governor, an official inquiry was set up. Gandhiji asked for 50% money, but later he accepted 25% of the money offered by the British landlord to the farmers. Gandhiji felt money was not important, but it was significant that the British landlords had surrendered their prestige and the farmers had learned to fight for their rights. As a result, within a few years, landlords left their land and farmers became owners of their land. So we uh, stop at this uh, point uh, in the previous class. Now let us continue further with the lesson. Now part six we are going to do now. Now the Champaran episode, uh, Gandhiji was able to uh, give uh, the peasants uh, of Champaran their land back and indigo sharecropping disappeared. He had sought a political solution to the problem of the people of Champaran. But his work did not end here. Gandhiji never contented himself with large political or economic solution. This was not his only concern. He was not satisfied with only giving the people a political and economic solution. He saw the cultural and social backwardness in Champaran village and wanted to do something about it immediately. As during his stay in Champaran, he saw that the place uh, was lacking in cultural and social um, upliftment. And he decided to remove the cultural and social backwardness of the area. He appealed for teachers, Mahadev Desai, Narhari Pare, two young men, who had just joined Gandhiji as disciples and their wives volunteered for the work. So he uh, invited other volunteers to come and work for the people of Champaran, Mahadev Desai and Narhari Pari, who had become his disciples. Several more came from Bombay, Pune, and other distant parts of the land. Devdas, Gandhiji's youngest son, arrived from the ashram and so did. Mrs. Gandhi. Uh, his wife also joined him and his youngest son also joined him in serving uh, in Champaran and removing the cultural and social backwardness of the area. Primary schools were opened in six villages. This was a requirement. Children need to be uh, educated and so primary elementary education need to, needed to be imparted. Kastur Bai taught the ashram rules on personal cleanliness and community sanitation. 
So this work of personal cleanliness and community sanitation awareness was given by Kasur Bai. Health conditions were miserable. Gandhiji got doctor to volunteer his services for six months. Three medicines were available, castor oil, quinine, and sulfur ointment. Anybody who showed a coated tongue was given a dose of castor oil. Anybody with malaria fever received a quinine plus castor oil. Anybody with skin eruption, eruptions received ointment plus castor oil. So uh, basic uh, medicines were given. Uh, Health care was taken up by the doctors with basic medicines. Gandhiji noticed the filthy state of women's clothes. He asked Kasturbai to talk to them about it. When women took Kasturbai into her hut and said, Look, there is no box or cupboard. Here are the, for clothes. The sari I am wearing is only one I have. During his long stay in Champaran, Gandhiji kept long distance watch on the ashram. He sent regular instructions by mail and asked for financial accounts. Once he wrote to the resident that it was time to fill in old latrine trenches and dig new ones. Otherwise, the old would begin to smell bad. So, even ashram work was not neglected by Gandhiji. Small instructions were given. The Champaran episode was turning point in Gandhiji's life. What I did, he explained, was very ordinary thing. I declared that British could not order me about in my own country. But Champaran did not begin as an act of defiance. It grew out of an attempt to alleviate the distress of large number of peasants. This is what Gandhiji had decided to remove the uh, distress, the problems of the people of Champaran. This was typical Gandhi pattern. His politics was intervened with practical day-to-day -day problems of the millions. His was not a loyalty to abstraction. It was a loyalty to living human beings. He was serving human beings. That was his main concern. In everything Gandhiji did, moreover, he tried to mold a new free Indian who could stand on his own feet and thus make India free. So he was preparing Indians to be self-reliant. Earlier in Champaran action, Charles Freer Andrews, the English pacifist who had become a devoted follower of Mahatma, came to bid Gandhiji farewell before going on a tour to Fizzy Islands. Charles Freer Andrews, who had become his follower when leaving for Fizzy Island, he came to meet him. Gandhiji lawyers thought it would be a good idea for Andrews to stay in Champaran and help them. Andrews was willing if Gandhiji agreed. But Gandhiji was vehemently opposed. He was strongly opposing this idea. He said, you think that it is an unequal fight? It would be helpful if we have an Englishman as our si on our side. This shows the weakness of your heart. It only shows we are weak if we are taking support of an outsider. The cause is just. You must rely upon yourselves to win the battle. You should not seek a prop in Mr. Andrews because he happens to be an Englishman. We should know how to fight our own war battles. He had read our minds correctly, Rajin Prasad comments, and we had no reply. Gandhiji in this way taught us a lesson in self-reliance. How to be self-reliant and fight for our own cause. Self-reliance, Indian independence, and help to sharecroppers were all bound together and which helped the people of Champaran and which also was a turning point in the history of our struggle for independence. So it set the pace, the Champaran, the Champaran episode, it was a turning point in Gandhiji's life and the struggle for freedom. We'll stop here and uh, if you have any doubts in the lesson, you can you are most welcome. You can post it in the WhatsApp group or in your Google Classroom. Thank you. Take care. Have a nice day.